Hello, my name is Lewis Talley with InSource Solutions, and today I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking to you about a new feature in System Platform 2017 known as Object Wizards. So first, let's briefly describe what they are. As I mentioned earlier, they're new for System Platform 2017. In previous versions, they were a part of Orchestra Graphics. Now we've enabled them within objects themselves. And what they allow you to do is build a more complex object with choices for configuration. So you can think of it as like building a super object. So you could use fewer objects to assemble your galaxy. It has a built-in tester, so you don't have to necessarily put it into runtime or create an instance to see what it actually does. You can see right from the interface, and it only enables what you turn on. So you can have a lot of options in the object, but in the instance itself, it only enables what you turn on, thereby making deployment quicker. Let's take a look at what it looks like in real time. I've now shifted to my virtual machine where I have System Platform 2017 installed. I've created a galaxy, and I've defined a template based off of the master user defined. And for the purposes of this video, there's nothing in the object. I just named it Simple Object Wizard Test. And you'll see this is the main screen here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some attributes. And I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. So we'll just add a number of attributes. Let's say we'll add six. And we're going to give attribute four, five, and six some configuration. In this case, I just want to keep it simple. So I'm going to just enable historization for attributes four, five, and six. Now we're going to come over to the choices and options part of the wizard. And I'm going to add a choice group. In this case, I'm going to give it a friendly name called history. We'll change the names of the choice to yes and no. From here, all we have to do is make the associations. So for the attributes that are historized, I would click on yes. And I would click on the attribute over here in the attribute window. Add the plus to, to click the plus sign to add it. So I'm doing that for 4, 5, and 6. I did them in reverse order. So you'll notice over here that the number updates indicating that I have 3. And for no, I'm going to add attributes 1, 2, and 3. So now let's assume we want to give someone the ability to do some additional configuration above and beyond whether or not something is just historized or not. Say for instance the description or the storage period or whatever. We could do that with an option. So we're going to click on the add option. I'm going to just give this a name. We'll just call it description for short, DESC. I'm going to add the association of attribute 5 with it. And down here in the settings for the historized attribute discrete attribute name. And down here in the settings I'm going to click the little visible filter. Notice that that count goes to a 1. And I want to remember to click the checkbox to say when that's true. So when that option is turned on, they will see the hist.discrete attribute name. So I think that's pretty much as simple as you can get to illustrate the point. So let's go through and actually click the tester. This is a really neat little thing, so I don't have to actually create an instance to see what it's doing. So let's see if I got my logic right. So if I select history, yes. Let's turn off this DESC attribute. If I select history, yes, you see over here, I expose attributes four, five, and six with the history option checked, which is exactly what I want. And we'll cheat a little bit. If you click the checkbox, you see I expose an additional setting to give this an overridden name if I want to. So if we select no, what would you expect to see? Attributes one, two, and three. It looks like I made a mistake and added attribute five. Oh, because I left this checked. So we see attributes one, two, and three. So we'll go ahead and create an instance of this just to show you what it looks like. Save and close. Also notice next to my object there is a unique looking mark. I don't know what the name of that mark is, but it's different from all the other objects. And that mark indicates that I'm using an object wizard. So I'm going to right click on it and select new instance. And just like we saw in the test, historized attributes, four, five, and six. When the option, oh, sorry, when the choice is set for yes, and when it's set for no, attributes one, two, and three. I've shown you this with attributes, but you can associate any configuration within the object from symbols, scripts, graphics, whatever. So you can truly make a really powerful object from a simple object. I hope this was a clear understanding of the basics of what object wizards are, and thanks for taking the time to view this.